Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Birdie, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Dr. Sabrina Starlin, author of How to Hire the Best. Dr. Sabrina, welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. I'm excited to be here. Well, we are thrilled to have you. Are you ready to get started? Yes, let's go. All right. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? All right. So I, as I mentioned to you, as we were coming on, this is my third book coming out and I keep learning and I know that I still have a lot left to learn, but the advice is around the notion that we just don't know what we don't know. And when it comes to writing a book, I, I have a doctorate, so I'd done a dissertation writing. A, writing was not hard for me. That was the easy part. Um, what I didn't know and didn't fully appreciate is the book doesn't end when your pen is down or you take your hands away from the keyboard and you you're done. That's just the beginning. The uh, thinking through what needs to come on the back side of that and understanding even the context of how you want your book to serve you and what what is your greater purpose in life and how does your book fit into that? Because after you have written that book, it's it, it's out there and it's an opportunity to further your your life's work and your purpose and you, you real, I've learned I needed to have a better plan for the marketing side of the book and, and what to do with it afterwards. So that is, that is my advice. Listening to this podcast, learning from Paul and others who have, have been there and done that, who understand the marketing side, who understand the products that can be developed around the book and how to, how to position from there. That's the piece that I would say, just pay attention to that. And and I I wish I would have paid more attention to it with my last book earlier in the writing process, because there's even as, as we're writing our books, there are things that we want to put in our book that invite the reader to, to stay in touch and to take next steps with us. And I, I don't think I did that as well in my first how to hire the best book. And what do you what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? Myself, <laughs> getting out of my own way. Um, this last edition of How to Hire the Best that'll be out October twenty fourth. I have had it done since end of last year. Like it could have been published end of last year, but my awareness of what I needed to be prepared for on the back end and thinking through how I want to utilize it in our business to serve our clients and and really build myself as an author, I spent a lot of time sorting that out over the early months of this year and getting the team in place and the support in place so that as the book launches, we can do a real launch and read I think that's the piece is reaching more people with it but I had to getting out of my own way and looking at what were the distractions in my life that kept me from moving forward so for me I had a lot of involvement still in my business that I needed to bring other team members in to take on different roles in the business so I could free up my time to focus on what are we going to do with this book as it launches and after it launches. So I just had to get out of my own way. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges is making sure that book's ready and that you know, okay, now it's time to move on to the next part of this thing. Because it's really hard not wanting to go back and double check everything and just making it perfect. And one of the biggest things I've always taught my clients is one, don't be afraid to take the plunge. 
But the other part is done is better than perfect. You know, when it's ready, get out the way and let the experts take care of the rest. Absolutely. And you know, something else that I've learned is that having readers who are in your target audience read it before the final edit Mm -hmm. and get their perspective because they see, they will see things that we overlook that because we're so close to the material at that point and their feedback in both editions of my book, the, the reader feedback has been crucial in fleshing out concepts that I just skimmed over but I realized, no, no, this is information that people want more in depth. They want more guidance on it. And that also leads to opportunities to look for what are the the free resources that are going to be created from the book that can be given to an audience that will, invite again, invite them into a further relationship. Absolutely. Because, you know, I think some of the best things we see out there, too, and I'm sure you've seen this checklists, different things like that, different guides, different strategies. And it's just a great way to add that further connection. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I read a lot of books myself and I so appreciate when an author creates a checklist or a template. So and, and I know it's all right there in the book and I could go and take the time to do it myself. But it's just it's just a nice gift when the author does that. Well, let's talk about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you have used in your book launches that has worked well. Yes, webinars. So with my first edition of How to Hire the Best, I created a free masterclass around the content. And what surprised me about that is everything is written in the book. It's all there. And yet there's something that a reader really enjoys about interacting and seeing the author on video, hearing the author talk about the concepts. That's a whole different way to engage the material than the written word. And so when I created the free masterclass, we turned it into an evergreen offering. We still have people going through that several years later um, and then moving into the paid course that accompanies the book. The, but that, that masterclass became something that when someone said, well, tell me about your book, I could just say, you know, I have a masterclass. And, and, and sometimes I even got um, people saying, well, I don't, I, I need this help, but I don't like to read. And I said, oh, no problem. Just go to the masterclass. It's there for you. And, and it's on demand. You can listen. There's, there's downloads, there's templates with that. So that really became one of the, I think the most powerful tools. It's not so much though, that that sold the book. And I want to be real clear about that. That didn't sell more copies of the book. But on the back end, in terms of adding revenue to the business, that became very impactful. And that's one of the biggest things that I talk with people about is the royalties are nice, but the game change in money is always in the back end. So with offers, with services, and you brought up one of the great strategies, and that is going from webinar, giving a lot of great value, and then inviting them to be part of a program, um, a Mm -hmm. part of a course to take their businesses to the next level. And that is one of the best ways to monetize your book because at the end of the day, front end's nice, but the game change in revenue is always going to be on the back end of things. It is. And the other thing that has been a pleasant surprise for me from doing the webinars and then I did live offerings of the class and then I eventually moved that to an evergreen offering as well, I learned so much from the readers by doing those live classes because I could hear where their stumbling points were. And I also got a firsthand glimpse of what is working. And so because my the How to Hire the Best is a series, every time I'm publishing, the, the reader is getting my most fresh content around latest and in, in what's working. And so that opportunity to interact in a live way with the audience for, especially for nonfiction as they're applying the material they're reading, that's been priceless to me. It's helped us evolve our, our higher ticket program. Um, it's helped how we show up and serve our clients just because it's, it's tremendous market research happening right before our eyes. 
Well, speaking of books, I'd like to know what is your favorite book and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? So my favorite book of all time is The Pumpkin Plan by Mike Michalowicz. The Pumpkin Plan is a, a book that really showed me the value of conserving my energy resources. I was a solo practitioner when I read The Pumpkin Plan, and I was trying to serve people of all, all different types of clients. And I was not tuned in enough to who I'm best meant to serve. And identifying the, the clientele that I was working with, they were getting value, but I was not getting value back from them. And I'm not talking about a monetary sense of value. I'm talking about contributing to my own growth and development. So what I've learned from the pumpkin plan is when I'm working from my personal sweet spot, the clientele that I'm working with are pushing me to my outer edges and, and constantly pushing me to learn and grow. And that's where I really thrive is when I'm pushing that envelope for myself. And I, I've learned from the pumpkin plan about building my business around my core values. And I've incorporated that even in the how to hire the best strategies in my book because I teach business owners in the hiring process, you need to hire people who align with your core values. If that alignment is not there, they will cause a lot of heartache in your business. I love that you mentioned that because that's one of my big philosophies too. Our core value is always about truth and service and truth and healthfulness. And if it's not the right fit, same thing whether we're talking about a strategic partner or with a prospective client is if they cannot answer the question of what their core values are within five seconds, to me, my spidey senses start to tingle. And that means I'm not going to work with that person. Absolutely. Yeah. It, 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 I think that's an, an interesting observation. If you ask them what their core values are and they can't tell you, mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely run the other way. And I, I love to get people just telling me stories about their core values because that also lets me know if there's depth to yes. what they're sharing or if they're just pulling something out of the blue. Exactly. You can't gimmick it. It's got to be something that you live and have lived for many years. And with, with ours, I mean, I've, I've had the same personal core values my entire life. So when we built our publishing company, that's exactly what it's going to be built on. It's going to be on truth service, not promising our clients the moon and the stars, being very realistic, going, hey, this is how you make your revenue. This is how you monetize it. And when you do that and are crystal clear with them, the clients that are going to connect with that, they're going to be the best people that you can possibly work with. Yes, so true. For a final question, what is your favorite quote and why? So this one comes from Zig Ziglar. A lot of people have gone further than they thought they could because someone else thought they could. This one speaks right to my heart because I am where I am in life because I have had people who saw my potential, who nurtured it, who encouraged me, who spoke my ability to be more than I was at the current time and spoke that to me. And held me to that. And that I'm a coach. My business has tapped the potential. I believe in identifying the A players in the in the business world and really looking at where can they play bigger and how can I support them in playing that bigger game where they're really coming from their purpose in life and and bringing that out. And so that's what this quote from Zig Ziglar means to me is I really feel like it's my my job in life everywhere I go to be looking for someone who can go further than they realize. And I need to call it out for them and support them in it, assuming they want me to do that. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Sabrina, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show today. What is the best way for people to find you online? <laughs> at tapthepotential.com, T-A-P-T-H-E-P-O-T-E-N-T-I-A-L.com.
Excellent. Well, thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thank you, Paul. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how you can be featured in our brand new Get Published Business Book, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. 